Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now what we have here is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 690. If you had a $1000 budget for a graphics card in 2012, and you just so happened to opt for one of these, then the years following your investment would have been filled with gloriously high frame rates. It was a card for show-offs, a card for those longing for top quality graphical settings, but also a card that aged a lot quicker than some of the other high-end offerings at the time. See, the 690 is a dual GPU card. Under this traditional yet aesthetically pleasing stock shroud lies two GK104 chips with 3072 cumulative CUDA cores. Installing this in your PC is like installing two GTX 680s without the need for an external SLI bridge. But the problem is that nowadays building a system with multiple GPUs isn't as popular as it once was. Not to mention, a lot of new games don't even support it. That may be why it's a dying practice. This means that cards like the 690, which is clearly geared to such a market, seems rather irrelevant in 2019. The thing is, this card can now be found on average for $80 or pounds here in the UK, which means it's lost about $131 a year in value since launching. I paid exactly £80 at CEX, which was honestly a no-brainer for me. I've briefly owned one before, but this time it was for keeps, as part of my collection. Let's talk more about the specs. At $999, it was once the most expensive consumer card ever, and because it required two GTX 680 GPUs to build, which on their own were selling like hotcakes, the 690 was scarcely available. Speed-wise, we have a 915 MHz core clock, 1502 MHz memory clock, and a 1020 MHz boost clock, as well as 2 gigs of VRAM per GPU. It's big, it's power-hungry, but it's fairly cool and relatively quiet. So what can it do as far as modern games are concerned? Well, let's jump into some AAA titles with hopes to answer that very question. Firstly we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which like a lot of new titles doesn't support SLI by default. Sometimes it can be forced through Nvidia Inspector, and I tried exactly that. While we were getting a reading from both GPUs in MSI Afterburner, it's clear that this was merely a farce. I've tested the 690 twice throughout, one with both GPUs enabled, and once with a single GPU enabled. The latter being how you should expect to enjoy a lot of titles for the sake of keeping your temper in check. When disabling SLI, the game ran far better at medium settings with 1080p resolution, offering a console-like 30 frames per second. I then moved on to Apex Legends and once again had to make a couple of adjustments in Nvidia Inspector to get the second GPU to take some of the load. The problem here was that the screen started flickering and strange artifacts started appearing all over the map, which deemed it unplayable in my opinion. Disabling SLI here meant the flickering disappeared, but the frame rate stayed pretty much the same. I didn't get a proper chance to measure it first time round as the graphical glitches were giving me a bit of a headache, but it didn't differ too much from the 51 FPS we saw here. The game was set to high at 1080p, the resolution we stuck with throughout. Back in the day, this may have been capable of decent 4K performance, and while I'm sure it still is with older games, now Full HD is ideal. To get SLI working in Battlefield 5, I followed a very informative guide on the Battlefield forums, which meant I had to adjust a few things in Nvidia Inspector once again, though I'm glad I did because the game performed very nicely. What's more, we were taking advantage of the high settings here, so it looked great as well. On one occasion the game froze momentarily and the combined GPU usage hit 0%, but this was a single occurrence at the beginning of the level. It's worth mentioning though, after disabling SLI and jumping back into the same single player level, I noticed that the frame rate was cut in half. Honestly this seems a little low, I feel we should be somewhere around the mid 40s to low 50s here, but if that's the way things are then I guess it'll have to do. This is the best SLI result we've seen so far with the 690, but to get the game running well in the first place is a mild inconvenience, and that's not ideal when you just want to sit down and play a couple of games. Having said that, Crisis worked with both GPUs straight out of the box, but it is an older game, and came out during a time when the appeal of buying multiple graphics cards was greater. 
We squeezed just over 100 FPS out of the 690 during a little wander on the beach, though it's fair to say that there were a couple of minor dips every so often. I didn't cross any checkpoints when benchmarking as the game freezes briefly to save, and it would have had a negative effect on the percentile figures. Disabling the second GPU still meant we saw a decent result, with 66 FPS being the average. Anti-aliasing was turned off here, as that will have a detrimental effect on performance. Fallout 4, which released in 2015, also makes great use of multiple GPUs after making a couple of small changes in Nvidia Inspector and disabling the frame rate limiter from the Fallout prefs file in my documents. We were hovering around the mid-80s and this was about double that of a single GPU, sorry for the spoilers. I spent my time walking around the Taffington Boathouse area, as it can be quite harsh on frame rate, but things held up pretty well. Looking at the aforementioned single GPU result, and it's not terrible here with the Ultra preset enabled, but it's definitely a less satisfying experience overall. Far Cry New Dawn took advantage of multiple GPUs right off the bat. I did open Nvidia Inspector once again with the intentions of using the Far Cry 5 SLI profile, but it seems that the program had already selected all the necessary settings. The game ran at just over 60 FPS with the medium preset here, and overall it was more than playable. The initial moments after loading the latest save game gave us a few frame dips, but I guess it could just be the assets loading in as this issue quickly went away. The performance difference wasn't as significant with a single GPU here as it was with say Battlefield 5 or Fallout 4, but we definitely lost a good few frames. The Witcher 3, again an older title and one that better takes advantage of multiple GPUs, ran very nicely at Ultra on the 690. We did turn Hairworks off and turn Sharpening off altogether as well. No adjustments were necessary outside of the game, it just worked perfectly straight away. I took a brief walk around this settlement just outside of Novigrad and not only did it look fantastic as The Witcher has always done, but we were maintaining a solid 60 average here as well. No corners were cut in the creation of this game, and that can be said for the excellent multi-GPU support too. On a single GPU the game ran at closer to 30 FPS, which wasn't too bad really, especially if you lock the frame rate and turn on V-Sync, but taking full advantage of the 690's power here is definitely the way to go. As a further example that also portrays how well SLI worked in older titles, I also tested the classic that is Far Cry 3. You can see here that with the Ultra preset selected, SSAO enabled and nothing else changed, that the card had no trouble managing to achieve an average of 141 frames per second. The game looks excellent and performance was flawless. I love spending hours just running around or driving about the island as I did years ago, though I never saw a performance like this on my AMD A4 APU, put it that way. With a single GPU enabled, we were seeing half the frames. This is a great example of how multi-GPU support should work, and a great example of how it once worked. Probably the best we've seen today. As I may have mentioned, it is older games that really benefit, as they released at a time when there was a stronger emphasis not only on SLI, but on AMD's Crossfire as well. And developers were just more inclined to include support for such technologies. Now just for a laugh, I tested GTA San Andreas, which wasn't really benefiting from the second card, but ran at over 100 frames per second anyway. I'm not really sure why I included it, but I've always said that it's surprising how demanding this game can be on some hardware when you turn all the settings including anti-aliasing right up. So I guess I was a little intrigued, plus it's like the best game ever. I don't think a dual GPU card like the 690 is worth it anymore though. It's too much bother. If the majority of developers still introduced SLI support to their modern titles then maybe, but you'd be better off going for a much more powerful single card. Even buying a GTX 680 would make more sense because it would actually perform better than a single 690 GPU. The card is iconic, don't get me wrong, and back in the day sparked intrigue amongst those who wanted it, those who owned it, and those like me who just couldn't afford it. With all that said and done, I'm going to end the video there. Let me know what you think of the GTX 690 down below. Perhaps I'm a little bit biased because it is certainly one of my favourite creations of all time, though I cannot make excuses for its 
rather poor modern day performance in some cases. Leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, leave some suggestions as to what videos you'd like to see next, I'm always open to suggestions down below, and uh, hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.